presentation. Uh, so it might go, we'll see how it goes. I've kind of played around with it beforehand. Um, it's kind of cool, actually. It's probably not going to work, though, just because I'm trying to show it off. Yeah, see? Totally not even seeing you. That's what you get. Um, I'll work on that later. Uh, to introduce myself, I'm Blake Bishop. I graduated not too long ago, about six months ago, from Newmont University. Any Newmonters in the crowd? There's a couple of different. There we go. Um, I got my degree in web development and design, um, and then I actually started my internship at Nuvi, and I've been here ever since. Uh, I served an LDS mission in New Zealand, so I'm a Kiwi at heart. So the All Blacks World Cup's going on right now, so it's big. Uh, I'm Dennis Wilkins. Uh, I'm also a developer at Nuvi. Um, you can find me on uh, Twitter and uh, GitHub. Um, a little bit about myself is uh, I uh, previously worked for Pseudoapp, um, MX, Solar Networks, Adobe, Oversock, kind of get around, but you know. Um, uh, I, I'm supposed to like talk about interesting, interesting things. So uh, I have an iPhone app that I released in like 2008 when the app store first came out. It has over 3 million downloads. Super embarrassing app, so don't ask about it. Um, I also uh, got really big into WebOS. If anyone remembers what that is, come on, any WebOS guys? All right. Okay. Web. Can you hear me better now? Man, you have to be really close to this thing. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, I have a um, back in the WebOS days. I uh, developed a the number one Twitter client for it. It was also the number six sold all time. They had like a contest so you could actually see the stats. Um, so I don't know if there is any other WebOS developers out there, but it was a pretty cool JavaScript uh, operating system. So. You got your oh. back, man. You got it. All right. So it's working now. So double right. tap and you switch. That's cool, right? Kind of cool. <clears throat> okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to follow it switched on its own. We're going to uh, do this good bit. So pull out whatever device you have on you, a phone, whatever. Try to wake you up from your lunchtime sleepies uh, and go to kahoot.it. And then put in that name. What is it? Somebody said Bobby Tables. Got Bobby Tables. There we go. So these are just going to be questions about to get to know you a little bit, your experience with React, your experience with visualizations, uh, your experience period. <laughs> Someone's put, trying to put in naughty nicknames. But this was built for children, so. Foiled. Foiled. <laughs> All right, we'll give it like maybe 10 more seconds. You guys are developers, you're supposed to do things quickly. Give him a dad joke. <clears throat> I'm gonna say a dad joke, so, um, because we're waiting. Uh, so I went to this Mexican restaurant a couple days ago, and uh, I looked at the menu, and I decided what to order. I went up there and said, hey, can I get a shrimp taco, um, but can I get a normal size? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no less. All right, we're, we're going, we're going. Here we go. So, pretty easy. That's really small. What is your experience with React? There's going to be some squares. You just tap them. 60 seconds is going to feel like an eternity. If, if you can't read it, the red one is none, the blue one is hobbyist, the uh, yellowish one is proficient, and green is advanced. It just scales. <laughs> oh, did, did you do hobbyist? Yeah. All right, I think that's probably long enough. Oh, we got some more answers. Oh, hey, everyone answered. Good job, guys. All right, wow, that surprises me. Okay, so 28 has no React experience. Um, the reason why we chose this website is because instead of uh, just showing you the numbers, they, they 
centralize it a little bit, give you a little bit of a scale there. Okay, so we'll go next. Do you use React at work? I'm guessing this will be even less. 30 seconds, so if you answer quick, this will be over. Take less. Is it 62? Yeah, we're almost there. Waiting on two of you. <laughs> oh, maybe they're 63. Maybe they're 63. 64. <laughs> well, wow. Well, we have a lot of people here. There are a lot of people. <laughs> Only two seconds. Come on, who's slacking? Come on. There we go. Time was up on that one. All right. Half and half. That's pretty good. Okay, so we got a little more. I don't think those numbers lined up, though. <laughs> yeah, at all. <laughs> Yeah. Switch to the colors? No, they switched it to the yes and no were different in different orders. So. <laughs> you guys can't follow simple instructions. <laughs> this is red and yellow. Is that the next question? We yes, can you follow simple instructions? All right. We don't react. Yes. Yeah. All right, what tool? D3 is red with the triangle. It gives you, it's for kids. It gives you three things. Highlight chart, diamond, blue, wrote my own, and then other is green. If, if you don't do visualizations, uh, do other, I guess. <laughs> None of the above. Oh, I should have done faster. Oh, yeah, everyone got in that time. Good job. That was awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. All right, so most of you said other, which could also mean our data set is not strong. Other could mean <laughs> not at all, <laughs> or you wrote your own. It's a bad field. Uh, D3 seems like a lot of you have experience with D3. It's kind of the go-to. All right, cool. We have okay, last one. Well, this one should be quick. Yes or no, or food. Red is yes. Blue is no. <laughs> Man, or I'm guessing most of you are gonna go circle here. Luckily, it's after lunch because it would have been all yellow or circle. All right, we got like two people who know on this. Hey, no, okay. No one likes React. Okay. That probably means you guys are already way too good at React. You don't need to go to that class, right? So I'm guessing. All right. All right, I'm going to talk about why we visualize data. Um, data is just numbers, right? Uh, for people, uh, just really close. Really close. Um, so, for so one of the reasons why, because uh, it's just a spreadsheet of data, like it says, right? Um, when we visualize the data, it helps us interpret the meaning of what that data is. Um, good visualization can help your UI make it look a lot fancier too, right? And if we, we can take that data and we can give it some emotion and some feeling, we can you know, use colors and uh, sizes to make sure that people really understand what it is. So here's an example. Here's the NASDAQ versus the New York Stock Exchange over the last, uh, well, not over the last 20 years, but 20 years of data. Um, I mean, it's the raw data, it looks like a table, it's not that useful. Uh, but when we uh, um, visualize that data, you can actually see uh, the information and determine you know, where the outliers are, right? So uh, once we know that we need to visualize the data, how do we do that, right? Um, a lot of us have already written or used existing uh, components, uh, whether it's like flot, plot, D3 um, and uh, high charts, and we need to be able to get those to work. Um, so why are we using existing technology um, with React? Uh, well, because most of us at our companies, we already have a, uh, good visualizations. They already work. The, most of the code already works really well. Um, and, you know, when you're working with uh, other developers and you have timelines and stuff, it, it makes sense to quickly iterate. Maybe you already have an existing code base and you need to just, um, by piecemeal, create uh, each individual thing to React. So you're slowly transforming your code base to React. 
So uh, how do we do this? How do we uh, get your existing visualizations to render in a React component? All right, you guys notice that switch? I did it with my arm, just in case you're wondering, it's awesome. Uh, so this is the simplest way uh, to do it. So all you do is override your component did mount function. So for all of you who haven't used React before, uh, React has some lifecycle functions. Component did mount is called, uh, obviously, right as the component mounts. Um, and so we create our chart there, and then when it is rendered, we can pass in the class. So fairly simple. We used MVD3 for this example. Um, hopefully this all is pretty straightforward. Um, also, I guess, if you aren't used to React, render that render function is actually rendering your HTML. Uh, so that's literally just an SUG. Um, and then if you want to update your data, so say you have a set of data uh, that's gonna change over time, you have a component did update. So same thing here, we have an update function, so we create it in the component did mount, and then a the component will update. We just call this update function that we made that's using MVD3 to uh, do some more uh, D3 styling. So hopefully that's all pretty straightforward. Oh, one yeah. Last thing. yeah, so one of the key uh, things that when you're using uh, React is if you really haven't played with it a ton, you'll notice that every single time uh, your parent's state or props change, so will the children, um, it will actually go through and create a new virtual DOM for all the children. Uh, so there's something, uh, there's actually a mixing called pure render, and it's kind of like a, um, a pattern where you create components that all they do is render. So um, a good thing to do in your component, especially if you're using like a third party uh, um, tool for doing your visualizations, is to make sure that your component really contains uh, no state. You want to use the props only. It needs to be read only. And that's what uh, pure render really means. It's read only, and that's all it does. Um, and one of the reasons why you need to do that is uh, to prevent it from uh, re-rendering too often because a lot of times if you're using like uh, a jQuery UI chart uh, it's not efficient it's not going to be uh, good every time that a top level uh, component changes that it needs to be updated if it's in an animation cycle it could be interrupted stuff like that especially if, if your data hasn't changed no reason to re-render uh, re it so um, what we um, want to show here is uh, at the very bottom you'll see a should component update. Uh, that's another lifecycle event in React. And that says, okay, do I need to actually call my render call? Um, should component update will uh, pass in the new props and the new state. Now, keep in mind when I say new, it's what it thinks is new. It could be literally identical. So um, right here, we're using shallow equals. So that's this, uh, the bottom snippet uh, the la line 40, 41, and 42. Uh, I don't know if you guys can read it back there, but that is exactly what the uh, pure render mixin does uh, to determine whether or not uh, the state or props have changed. And I, I, I don't want to stress it too much, but it's really important that you make sure you do this. Otherwise, if you're using D3 or using anything, you're going to get way too many render cycles, especially if it's a read-only um, type component. So if you look at this, this is literally the whole entire uh, component to render a bar graph. Um, so do you want to show them that? Yep. All right, so let's go to our example of that. Over here. Uh, so this is just a Webpack server that's running locally. Uh, with the code that we just showed you. Uh, so here's our component, and then there's a set timeout that'll change the data. Uh, has a little animation there. So, um, did you take the console logs out? I did. You did. I, yeah, whatever. So there you go, you can see the cycle there. The component will only update when data has changed. Uh, that was a big issue that we ran into, is that uh, as the parents were changing, as data was changing in the parents, it wasn't always the children. They'd still get re-rendered and re ran into some more performance issues because of that. So that's one thing to kind of watch out for. It's super easy to fix. This one? And it's super easy to fix. It is. <coughs> uh, 
Okay, now I'm going to show how to write a, um, a simple data visualization with React. Uh, this is going to be a, a horizontal funnel chart. Um, so why are we using only React to uh, do a data visualization? Uh, to do a simple one, it's a really good learning point for you to uh, you know, get good experience on how to build something bigger or something better, right? Uh, React's DOM, uh, virtual DOM, is super fast. So if we can write it all in uh, React, it, it's going to be a lot faster. If you're using D3, D3 uses a thing called Smash. Um, that's a similar type technology to uh, um, React's virtual DOM, but it's not as efficient, and it's really meant for SVG. Uh, and then, come on, like if you can render a whole entire chart with divs, that's kind of cool. Um, so how do you do this? You can do basically the same thing, just render. That's all you need. Um, and I'm going to show you an example. It's a little bit ghetto because there is a height state, which is uh, probably not the best thing to do. But for this example, it makes a lot of sense. Um, so you'll see in here, uh, code example is that uh, we're getting a data. So um, this.props.data, you'll notice in all of our examples, we're using this.props.data. Um, and what we're doing is we're just going to iterate through the data by doing uh, a map on it, and we're going to return back a uh, visualization for that. Uh, so, yeah, and this is all ES6. I don't know if you guys are uh, using ES6 or ES2015, whatever you want to call it. Um, so, um, so this is the second part. We have the visualization. Uh, what, most of this thing is just doing a math computation to determine how big the borders are supposed to be, because we're using a couple border hacks to, to actually render the funnel chart, so that way we can keep each individual funnel piece in an individual div. Um, so there's a few calculations, there's a few uh, prop type requirements. So let me just show you FunnelJS. So this is something that um, I wrote. Um, let's see, a few years ago, actually, in Backbone. And then I for, uh, open source it. It's got like a few hundred uh, forks on it. But then I decided today, right before this, that I would uh, write it in React. Um, so here's a funnel chart. You notice it renders really quickly. Um, and there's a timeout that's going to go, and it's going to animate it. And one of the good things about doing it this way is that um, with all divs, you can use CSS transitions to handle everything for you. So if you're actually doing inline styles, you can, uh, which is typically bad, but in this case, it actually makes a lot of sense. Um, you can do the animations really uh, smoothly because you let the browser do all the animation for you. Uh, so if you see like each section, so this is imagine you're going to a website. So this is new. Uh, you have a new session, people adding to a car. Where's the fallout happening, right? So a good visualization for this. Um, that's a good example for this visualization to see. You know, okay, people are adding to the car, but they're not going to the checkout process. Maybe there's something wrong with my checkout page. Oops, oops wrong way. And then the next thing, this is kind of a little more advanced. We're going to, uh, a good thing to do, um, but you, it's a lot more advanced, takes a lot more effort, is to uh, use React to render your code, um, but use D3's calculation engine. Um, why? Uh, D3, provi D3 provides some really nice calculation stuff for SVG, for doing uh, um, angles, for doing. Uh, basically min, max, ranges, all sorts of stuff like that. Now, you could write your own, but using D3 things is super powerful. It's super easy to understand. Um, and React is still fast. Like I explained earlier, Smash um, is similar, but it's, meant for, it's specifically meant for SVG. Um, and it's just not as efficient as uh, React is at doing its virtual DOM. And because, you know, why would you do it? Because you're a hipster. You want to write everything in React, right? Um, so, how do you do this? So you're gonna, you're basically gonna have to write a lot of abstraction for uh, React's component. You're gonna have to create like a base graph for the SVG to hold it. And uh, you know, D3, you don't have to necessarily use the graph. You can use uh, a canvas or whatever. But typically, people are using SVG. And then, uh, if you're really smart, you actually won't write this yourself. You'll use React D3, which already exists, and it basically did all the abstraction for you. Um, a good a good blog post, and I probably um, I'll post this uh, on my Twitter this link, um, and that's a really good blog post on why you would do it this way uh, um, by Formidable Labs. 
So let me just kind of go and explain what's going on here. So this is one of the examples. Here's your base chart. And this is, is kind of why I said don't do it yourself. You, you can do it yourself, but it's going to be significantly um, time consuming. So here is a base chart. So you notice it has a lot of prop types. Um, it's got a basic uh, React element at the bottom. And th th this is uh, actually React D3 components um, that uh, that library. Um, so that's just the base chart. So then inside of that chart, you have a bunch of render calls, you have all these mouse enter stuff, and this is to render bars. And then uh, let me drop over here into some more code in So here's the chart. So you'll notice all this code. This just is the base chart. Then you have the bar chart. So you need to actually make it a bar chart. And you'll notice this has a lot of code just to determine what the bar chart is. It has the scales, all other stuff. But the, one of the main things that you need to do is when you're creating an element uh, like a G, which is a grouping in SVG, um, you need to create those props and have it passed down. And you'll see that this just is creating a bar chart wrapper. And inside of it, it'll actually do a map and create all the bars. So you're looking at this pretty gnarly, and you have a bar, and this bar determines, okay, um, how big is the bar? You know, what happens when you uh, click on it? You'll have mouse enter, mouse leave, and then you'll use callbacks for events. So if you have uh, a visualization that is interactive, um, one of the things that you need to do in React is to create callbacks. So each individual components will have callbacks all the way back to what you, um, your base view that's using it. Like I said before, you don't want to use state. Um, even for some of your hover stuff, call it back to the parent. Let, th let them determine what needs to happen because you still want your component to be, um, so if you're selecting something, you want it to be uh, just a renderer, a pure renderer. So, and again, so we're looking at the bar chart and we're, you know, we're hundreds of lines of code for a bar chart. So it's, it's kind of gnarly, um, but it works. And there's tons of great libraries that exist for that. So here's the advanced one, pretty simple. Um, this is comparing Angular versus React. Um, forks on GitHub, and then you'll see uh, a timeout that should uh, animate one of those bars. If, did we enable that? I don't know if we enabled that. Um, so, okay, next thing. Uh, so what do we do at Nuvi? Um, we actually render directly with Canvas. Uh, it's an interesting idea. SVG is pretty awesome. Canvas is pretty awesome. They're both uh, pretty mature technologies. Um, why do we use uh, Why do we use Canvas? Because uh, Canvas is crazy fast. Um, we can easily get 60 frames per second without anything, without any issues, right? I, if you play PlayStation 4, like half your games render at 30 frames per second at 1080p, which sucks. So um, the renderings aren't part of the DOM. You don't have to worry about the DOM. You're just rendering directly to the Canvas. And uh, maybe you're really good at writing pure Canvas code. There are some people that like, you know, a few years ago just spent their whole entire time writing Canvas. They didn't really get into VML and SVG because there were two different technologies that you had to worry about if you're working in IE or if you're working in uh, a good browser. <laughs> so, and then it's, it's rasterized, um, which that's, an, that's an on why. I, I, that, I don't know if that's good or not. I guess, you know, scalable vector graphics a little better, but it's a, uh, it's a good uh, choice. So uh, how to use Canvas, um, the same way you do with existing components. So if you already have an existing chart, you're basically um, not going to use most of React. Um, you'll uh, mount and render, and you'll update, get component to update and update your uh, view. And don't forget to pure render. One of the issues that we ran in, like he said earlier, was that uh, we weren't using pure render. Um, and so we would get uh, new data coming in from like a sidebar item happening and then our graph would change or we would like load up a dialogue and our graph would try to re-render itself. Um, and pure render is super easy to implement. Like I saw before, it's one function, one line, um, and there's even a mixing for you. So uh, here is one of our UIs that we have. Here's in the screenshot. He's going to actually open up and demo um, live uh, one of our tools uh, right now called Audiences. Yeah, so I wanted to, since it's all just been basic, I kind of want to show you something a little more advanced. Oh, we're going to have it open. So this is our audiences tab. So we, like you said, we use Canvas. Um, this is tracking the Apple Watch. Uh, so this is pulling in Facebook data. Uh, 
Nubi has a contract with a company called Datasense where we're able to get <coughs> public and private Facebook data, uh, not the actual posts, but the statistics on it. Um, so this is you know, a timeline of how interactions are coming in, different uh, gender and ages, and how they relate. It looks a little funky because I'm so zoomed in, but that's getting worse. You have to refresh, I think. I do have to refresh. Hold on. Uh, yeah, and like I said, these are all canvases. They scale, that's why I had to refresh, is because the, the scaling's happening um, on the refresh. So one of the cool things we're able to do with this is because they're components and they're abstracted, we can create new uh, components, new charts based on the data that's getting passed in. So we can cross-section cross data. Um, so right here we have age by Facebook topic. Um, so these are different uh, topics that were also talked about when Apple Watch was being talked about. So um, Apple Inc. and birthday. And these are all just, all of these are the same components, uh, just with different data. That's real um, data. Yep, real live data coming in. Um, and then we can, you know, add it to our profile. Oh, that one looks interesting. Page handling for some reason looks interesting. Uh, and then it'll pin it down here. Uh, so, actually, I think it ended up in the middle. Uh, these are all our different charts, and they're really, uh, having them component based made it really easy to work with and really fun to work with when we got into cross sectioning data. Uh, you could reuse all those components with that data. So, um, that's kind of what Nuvi does. We love visualizing data, that's kind of what we're built off of. Does anyone have any questions about what we've talked about? We kind of covered a lot. Um, so, open up to any questions from you guys. I'm going to say one thing. Okay, we have one more thing, apparently. Um, another reason why we use a Canvas uh, here is because Canvas actually takes up a significantly less memory footprint because it's just rasterized, whereas a B, uh, SVG has to um, actually have a rasterized version as well as the SVG version in memory. Um, so we can actually have like hundreds of charts without really any issues. We don't really end up with any uh, memory leaks. That's because we're kind of good coders at that, not having memory leaks. But um, yeah, you'll see we have tons of visualizations. A lot of them have uh, multiple pieces of information inside of them. Um, and yeah, I think one of the coolest things that, um, that we do is um, when you're viewing the reports, you can use the same components to build out you know, different types of visualizations. And then including our small uh, previews, our live previews, like you said earlier. So the little thumbnails you get are actually completely interactive thumbnails to be able to get information to what you're looking at. So, so no, no questions? No, uh, that's good. I like no questions. So. I don't know if that means that you don't care, <laughs> or we over-talked it. Or were we under talking? It, it means we told them everything they needed to everything know. Everything you need to know. You're all professionals. We have one question in the back. So with React and the virtual DOM and how it figured out what it needs to have changes the DOM, you're saying you use CSS transitions to change that. Is the virtual DOM totally replacing what's in there? So I'm to know to use the transitions and then also to add a new. So what is it replacing exactly in that sense? So, um, so he asked, uh, so, because we're using the virtual DOM and it does like the diffing, and we're using CSS transitions to uh, do the animations, the virtual DOM actually is only changing one property. So, if I do, let's say we're um, we have a height change. Um, so, if you style um, height colon you know 10 px, uh, if the animation would actually still be done by the the browser renderer. So, DOM, the virtual DOM will say, hey, now it's 100 px. So, it literally would just change the thing from 10 to 100, and then uh, the browser would take over from there saying, hey, look, this thing's changed, um, and there's a transition on this class or you know this element, and it will actually go and tween it for you. So um, I'm not sure if that's, if that's what you're asking, but yeah, the, the, it's not going to determine, oh, do I need to transition this, and it's not, uh, React's not going to go 10, 11, 12, 13 at the, you know, if that's what, is that, do I get kind of, I mean, you gave me a head shake. I think as I answered it, maybe. Okay, good. Any other? All right, cool. We have, uh, I think we're done about five minutes early, so I'll give you guys a little more time to go to the next class. So thanks for coming up.